Hi guys, Dave here, and today I'm going to show you a solo by Steve Lukova. It's um, from a track called Born Yesterday, and it's from his Candyman album, which he recorded back in the 90s. Um, a really nice laid-back solo. It's got some elements of Jeff Beck in there. Uh, got some really great kind of, kind of Mixolydian licks in there like bluesy licks in there so um without further ado i'll get into it and then maybe i'll talk about it a bit more in depth later on okay so the whole thing's in the key of g and it starts like this <laughs> So what he does there at the beginning, he kind of scoops the bar, and what I think he does is that he's got the bar kind of depressed, and then he does a little one fret bend from fret number 17 up to 18, and just brings the bar up at the same time. So he picks it, like that. Now while it's sustaining, what he does, he gives it a quick flick up on the bar. Now sometimes I've seen him do this by just hitting the bridge, so you could do it like this, or I've seen him do that before. So a little pull up and release on the bar, and then pull off onto 13 on the B. Sorry, all of that was on the B string, by the way. Then we're playing 15 on the G, then slowly bend it up um, a semitone. Then play 12. Then 14 D. 12 G. 15 on the G. And again, very slowly bend it up a semitone. While it's still bent, re pick it. Then back to normal on the 15, then pre bend upper semitone again. Hold it and then give it a bit of a bright eye on the arm and then pull off onto 12. Like that. So I'll try that phrase one more time. Okay, the second phrase. So for that, I'm bending a uh, whole step on the 18th fret on the B, and it's kind of bend, release, and then re-bend. Like that. Then pick it twice. And then, then let the bar down a bit, a little bit of a dive bomb. Then we're gonna play 17 on the B. Then dip it, and then slide down to 15. So, like that. That's 13, 15, 11 on the B. And then slightly uh, do a quarter tone bend on the 11th fret. So just slightly bending it sharp. So, you know, that real kind of bluesy kind of uh, approach that he takes to a lot of this. So now we're on 12 on the G. Let it down on the bar. And then pull off onto 10 and then let the bar back up basically. So you get. Add a bit of a bright on the bar. So. Like that. So up until now, that whole thing has been played over basically a G. It's basically a, a G11 chord or, or an F major chord with a G in the bass. Whatever way you want to think about that. Uh, the next bit is now going to be played over over a C7 or C11 chord. Uh, so it kind of moves into kind of more C Mixolydian territory. So 
So for that, it starts off, plays 12 on the G, slides down to 9 and repicks. Again, using that vibrato arm, which he does for most of this track, actually. So we slide into 9 on the G, then it's 8 to 10 on the B. Then one fret bend. So you bend it up on the 10 to 11. Repick the bend. Let it down. Repick 10. And then play 8. Then. Right, so for that we're playing 10 on the G, 8 on the E. And then eight on the G, and then start giving it a quarter tone bend. Then that's ten D ten A. Eight on the A, and then we're going to slide from five to seven on the A. Then ten on the D. Eight. Then let the bar down. Check my tab down. Okay, so I'll play that phrase one more time. Like so. Okay, now for the final phrase. We're going to go back to the G, G7 or G, G11, which way you want to think about that. <coughs> so for this, we start on 15 on the B. Give it a, quite a, a, a wide vibrato with the arm. Then we're going to play um, a tone bend on the 15th fret. Then 15 on the E. Then 13 on the B. More vibrato. And then 15 on the E and slide down. And this is going to get us into our kind of a sixes move that happens. So for that, what we're doing is we're sliding 10 to 12 on the D. Keep that finger on. Play 12 on the B and slide down to 10. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to keep both those fingers on so that they ring into each other. Like that. Now for the next bit, he does a bigger slide. Um, I don't think it matters where he slides from, it's just generally quite low. So I think I tabbed it out as the second fret, but it doesn't matter really. It's where you end up that's the most important thing, which is fret nine on the D. Then we're gonna slide eight to six on the B, seven on the D, then slide six to five on the B, Seven on the G, and then that's five B, three on the G, give it a quarter tone bend, then it's five D, five A, five D, and add vibrato at the end. So you get this. Um, let me think. Uh, There you go, and that's the whole solo. Okay, so some things to think about. If you really want to nail this solo, or even just kind of getting into that kind of feel that Steve is so great at, is um, really pay attention to how how he's bending some of these notes. 
Um, a lot of them are, are quite long bends. You, you know, he takes he takes his time getting up up to these bends, and sometimes they're only a one fret bend, but you know, he really takes his time, and that's really a big part of the flavour of this solo and a lot of the other things that he does. So you know, the, you know those sort of things. He takes a lot of time getting there, and the other thing is this thing is got a lot of control where he, he'll go between like a, a a bent note and a fretted note you know so you know he'll do that sort of thing a great deal you know he really takes his time when he's doing this particular solo uh, probably another thing I'll mention is his vibrato arm work. I, it's no secret that he's a big Jeff Beck fan. So, uh, you know, bear that in mind. That he does a lot of things where he'll either pull the bar up very quickly and let it down like he does right at the start. That sort of thing. The other thing he does that reminds me of Jeff Beck is he does quite a, a violent vibrato with the bar. Um, one of the things that really brings that out is if you just let it hang just for a second before you add the vibrato and then give it a shake. You know, that's a kind of a, another thing that he does quite a lot. Other things he does is just kind of letting the note dive off just a little bit. So he does that quite a lot. Almost, uh, I think in some ways he likes to kind of mimic slide players. That. So, you know, kind of things that you can think about in your own playing. If you like that sort of thing, that's, that's how he's doing it. Probably the only other thing I'd mention is kind of note choice. I mean, it's quite bluesy. So, you know, mainly minor pentatonic being used here, but he's he's borrowing from the Mixolydian scale here and there as well. You know, he's, he's adding some kind of B natural notes in there. He's bending up to that sometimes. Um, and then when he cha when it goes to the C chord, he, he just goes into C Mixolydian. You know, there's that. So, you know, he's kind of following the chords, although there's only two chords in the whole solo but he's kind of adapting what he's playing to fit the chord that he's playing over at the time. Okay, just um, things to think about when you're working your way through the solo is to, you know, analy analyze the, the note choice that he's making. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I will see you for one real soon.